today we're at the town of Villa Rica and the Pine Mountain Gold Museum and we're going to get together here with John Powell and he's going to show us the, the do's and don'ts about gold panning. All right, so anyway, it's pretty simple mining here. Yes. Miner would come and um, whether he had a mule, burrow, whatever, but he had uh, his pick and his shovel and take the, the rocks, pretty much pound them, pulverize them to like a powder form, something like, like this right here. Yeah. Uh, earliest days would have seen your traditional miner, you know, what you think of in your head, uh, just chipping away, getting down in the creek beds, looking for evidence of the gold. Which black sand amongst other things? Or yeah, yeah. Things? Okay. Um, there, there was little evidence of that and you would have people working out, imagine, you know, a hundred degree day in the Georgia sun. With, and we were here shaded under a canopy. Yeah, and this is a good kind of mining yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. and we, you're assured to find a little something. But back in the day, you can imagine all these guys working hard in the sun all day long, not finding much, getting really angry and bitter. Yeah. And so, the, you know, that, that ornery cowboy mentality, uh, it made life hard. But eventually, they would occasionally find a little bit here and there. Now, eventually, we came up with... Uh, the, the concept of uh, leaching the gold mm -hmm. out of this. Because we have this baby powder fine gold substance. They would take the ore and large rocks, crush it into this sand, and at that point, they could dump in uh, chemicals and, and, and melt the gold, essentially, liquefy the gold using cyanide and mercury. Yeah. Now today, we're gonna step back in time a little bit and try to look at what they might have done and panning the gold out. Right. So you would simply add a slosh of water to your material, and our gold, no matter how uh, little there might be, it's going to be much heavier. Okay. It's a heavy uh, mineral. It's a okay. heavy rock that would sink to the bottom. As long as we're agitating that soil and sand, you're sure to get that gold at the bottom of this Pan. All right, and we got to put it at an angle or anything? We're going to put it down at an angle and we're going to wash that top layer off. Okay. And it's a slow and aggravating process. Many of the old timers, they can come in here and just slosh it around because they've gotten the understanding that they're not afraid of losing anything as long as they keep a little bit in there, they've agitated that gold to the bottom. Now luckily we've got these plastic trays, mm -hmm. you know? and they've got ridges to catch everything. But back in the day, they would have had an old iron skillet. Adding that weight to you know being crouched over in a creek bed, that'd make y'all hump back at some point in time. Yeah, and again, for every honest guy out in the creek doing this, there's probably two sitting, sitting in the hills, staying warm and jumping them at the end of the day, huh? Yes. Wow. This was a lawless place, and there was tons and tons of claim jumpers. We're getting down getting to the nitty-gritty nitty -gritty indeed, yeah. Uh, once we have removed so many layers, um, we'll get it thin enough that we can actually see any flakes that might be in this pan. They call it color, right? We're looking for color. Yeah. Got the gold, Pa. Piece right there. Piece right there. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of hobbies, uh, we say we throw a couple of eggs and bacon in this thing and, uh, and, and really get some gold, man. That looks like a, a good plate for a good breakfast. 